Alvin Hustler here, and today I'm going to show you stuff I've found from an estate sale. What's going on guys and gals? Chris the Bonafide Hustler coming to you live from the inside of my office and I actually went to an estate sale. I usually don't go to estate sales. I go to garage sales and thrift stores and things like that. Finally went to an estate sale and I found some really cool stuff for $52 and I'm going to share it with you on this video. Before I get to the content, make sure you subscribe, make sure you hit the like button, and make sure you leave a comment when you see anything that you think is cool or maybe I priced it incorrectly or something like that. But basically in this video I'm going to show you what I picked up at the estate sale this past weekend. I think it's really, really cool stuff. You let me know. Okay, so the very first find, we have this Drew Pearson Shockwave type vintage Kansas City Chiefs hat. Pretty neat. Um, shockwave because it has a little shockwave looking things. Anyways, um, unbent bill. Very nice interior. Probably a $15 to, $15 to $30 hat in my booth. Something like that. Probably the same on eBay. But yeah, this is one of the very first things I saw at the estate sale. And by the way, like I waited outside for maybe 10 or 15 minutes. There were probably 20 or 30 people ahead of me as well on at the estate sale. So, you know, I was like, eh, maybe I'll find some cool things. As soon as I go in that estate sale, there were so many cool things and nothing was pretty much priced. I paid $52 for all the things that you're going to see in this video. And so, yeah, this was one of the very first finds I picked up at the estate sale. I had to go twice to the hold desk at the very front. And yeah, I was just basically making a big pile because at the end, I got a great deal. All right, find number two, this Astronaut 6 Realistic uh, Radio. Pretty neat, haven't tested it out or anything like that, but it should sell between 20 or $30 in my antique booth. Looks like it's in okay condition, might be missing a little screen right here, but either way, people love tinkering with these things. I could put it for 20 bucks, it'd probably be gone in like a couple weeks. Uh, pretty nice looking thing, missing the battery bay, but who cares, right? For the most part, it does have the cord, and this is something that I definitely get into. Old radios, phonographs, whatever, that kind of stuff, where it's just vintage audio-based things, sell really good in the booth, and so I don't have anything like this right now, because it usually it's gone when I usually put it in, so I'm glad to have one of these in the booth. I think 20, 30 bucks should be suffice. Find number three, this Del Valley Junior High kind of satin jacket. It's made by Hartwell, nothing crazy, you know. Um, but yeah, very, very, very similar to like a chalk line or something like that. Um, perfect kind of thing for the booth. It's just something that someone might buy and be like, oh, I just want a basic windbreaker that looks kind of cool. Or maybe they have some kind of ties to wherever this Del Valley school is. This is probably a 20 to maybe $25 piece in my booth. And some people can put, you know, patches over this area. They might want to do something else with the back and repurpose it somehow. So yeah, 20 to 25 bucks for this in the booth is probably what I'm gonna be searching for. Got a Pardner's Western Pearl Snap shirt right here, which feels to be a little bit of like cotton and rayon, or maybe it's like a rayon polyester kind of thing. But anyways, it's kind of like the same material that you find um, the typical ruffle shirts made out of. Uh, but yeah, Pearl Snap shirts, there's no price on it at the state sale. I was putting it in a pile. And this will probably be a 17 to maybe $22 shirt in my booth right there, nice color, and people tend to buy plain pearl snap shirts, not the plaid ones, but the plain ones. They like them a lot uh, because they can actually put embroidered patches or patches with embroidery or just embroidery in these two uh, parts right here on shirts that don't have anything going on. So, um, and then they can resell them for like 30 bucks um, closer to the center part of town. So, uh, pretty nice. Had to put it in my pile, thought it was pretty good. All right, more satin stuff. I thought this was pretty cool, swingsters satin uh looks like a jacket that says ht right here i don't know what that stands for um a little bit of some marks right here looks like a cat got to it or something but it's in good condition surprisingly enough something like this is a little bit more pricey in my booth this is probably going to be around 40 50 dollars and it's nice it's in good condition probably came straight from the 80s and uh, it was just sitting in a closet i bought a lot of things from the closet you're about to see some other things that are really really cool um, but this is something I just had to sling over my hand. I was like just going as fast as I could and I put this just boom I was like that looks good. Like everything looks good. The cuffs look good. Everything looks good It's got some natural wear and tear to it that has, gives it character Someone might decide to take this whole patch off put their own thing, but yeah, it's got a lot of I don't know It's got a lot of character to it. And so 40 50 in my booth all day. All right, let's take it back to the Saved by the Bell days, right? Look at this thing. This is made by extra who really cares? It's a women's uh, button shirt 
and it's just a really, what do you think, 80s, late 80s, you think 90s, what do you guys think out there? Let me know, but it's pretty cool, and had no price, threw it in the pile, I think this in my booth is probably a $25 piece, and more than likely will sell in the next one or two months as the, you know, weather starts to turn from cold to bearable and summertime kind of stuff. People look for the weird, crazy looking things like this. I think it was a perfect find. All right, something that actually reminded me of like vintage Polo Ralph Lauren stuff was this. It's a denim type shirt made by uh, Red Ridge Mountain. Um, very patriotic, very nice. And of course, here's what really reminded me of like a Polo Ralph Lauren sweater or something is that we have the flag on the back. You know, it could be, I guess, Tommy as well, but um, yeah, this is my booth, probably more like a $25 to $30 shirt, and with July 4th coming, you know, in the summertime, someone might see this and just want to be a little bit more patriotic and have a button-up shirt at the same time, so it's perfect kind of thing for that. But yeah, I think $25, $30 ish would be about right for this shirt in my booth. It was just sitting there in the closet, had to put it in the pile. Something that I don't know what it's going to shake out at, but my guess is at the lowest end, 50 bucks. At the highest end, maybe like a hundred. This is a Logo 7, more than likely on the cusp of being vintage uh, Texas Longhorns jacket, right? It's a really nice looking piece. Nothing crazy, right? Got a little quilted interior. Um, the pocket right here has some stitching issues, but it's not like end of the world kind of stuff. I think in my booth I can get 50. I live in Austin, Texas, so just keep that in mind. This is like our home team right here, right? And uh, football season, people go absolutely nuts for football gear, hats, whatever. Um, I mean, it's a really big deal here in Austin, Texas. Texas Longhorns are just a huge deal. Um, so yeah, thinking at the lowest end, 50 bucks, at the highest end, probably 100. Um, there are jackets that uh, are made by Starter, <clears throat> Logo 7, that'll go up to about 80, 100, 100 bucks. But they're more predominant like orange. So these black variants, black, white, orange variants, might be able to reach that $100 mark pretty easily. We'll see. But uh, that's what I'm gonna be searching for for this jacket. It's just perfect jacket for this town. All right, kind of a neat shirt. This is probably like a parking lot shirt, so it was like probably sold at a parking lot after they won the finals, you know. But this is back-to-back -back NBA World Champions, um, 1994, 1995, Houston Rockets. Um, yeah, this is basically, you know, some of the best players that, that team ever had. Um, this is after Olajuwon days, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, anyways, it really doesn't matter. At this point, we're looking at a shirt with a single stitch on the sleeve, so we know it's definitely from that era, like the 90s. Back-to-back um, -back chance shirt like this, while it's not like an all-over design where the whole thing is Houston Rockets, still a pretty good design because it has the people's faces on it, which is pretty cool. Um, and it has that nice, thick, like, I hate this color. It was like the beefy tea kind of color. So, um, extra large, a good size. I think this is probably a... 20 to maybe $35 shirt in my booth. You know, since I live in Austin, Texas, people from Houston visit it, San Antonio, Dallas, and so there are sports aficionados in all those uh, cities, you know, and when they come to Austin and go to a vintage booth and they're kind of bored and they see something like this, might be able to, uh, you know, get them for around, I don't know. What do you guys think? Let me know out there. It's a pretty cool looking shirt. All right, let's switch it up from clothing. Uh, this was like right by the cashier station. Upon the very first drop off I did at the cashier's, cashier's like hold desk, I saw this thing in the corner of my eye. I was like, "Oh, no one picked that up. Weird. No one had a five dollar. Okay, had a five dollar price tag on it. Mind, once you make a big bundle at an estate sale, kind of these prices kind of don't matter anymore. The people just want to work a really good deal with you. So this is a Nylant gray variant towing track. More than likely would sell for around 35, 40 bucks on eBay. We have the hooks here with a string as well, so that's not missing or anything like that. I believe this is like a pressed steel, I guess that's what they call it, but it's really, really nice. It's not the green variant, which sells for more, all right, but the gray variant, which is really cool. I guess grayish blue. What do you guys think? You think uh, early 90s or you think late 80s? What do you guys think on this? But yeah, it's about $35 in resale for something like this, especially in my booth. Okay, now we're gonna get to one of the coolest pieces that, uh, it was one of the very first pieces I found at the estate sale. I slung it over my, my arm, and it started to, weigh, started to weigh a ton, but this was one of the very first items I slung over my arm when I was looking in the closet. This thing, this east-west, I mean, acid-washed field jean jacket, right? Not jean jacket because that would stop right here. It's more field-based because it's long, right? Um, I don't think anyone's gonna be hunting doves or quail in this thing, but it's pretty neat. Really, really reminiscent of like back in the day, Jordash kind of stuff. I'm um, thinking maybe late 80s for something like this, but uh, this in my booth is probably between 50 and $70 in resale. 
It's in great condition. It looks hideous, but it's cool. Like it definitely an eye catcher and uh, something that I think someone, I really think someone's gonna pick this up and go, you know what, one of a kind, definitely wanna buy it. I think this alone could net me back my $52 that I spent on the entire estate sale haul. Uh, but I thought that was pretty cool. What do you guys think out there? Let me know. And the interior is very interesting as well. The interior reminds me of some weird looking like maybe Tommy or Alan Solly kind of stuff. I don't know, but very back in the day, stuff you see in the mall. Ew, right? But nice jacket nevertheless. Okay, so this one's kind of more of a rare find. It's interesting because the top still has the hook that would be on the merchandising, you know, thing right here. So this is an unused Texas Longhorns, more than likely vintage hat. I'm thinking it's vintage. It looks vintage, everything screams vintage, and it has the powdery uh, foam stuff right there. It's not supposed to be powdery, but over time, the foam in these hats, um, yeah, just turns into like powder, right? So I can kind of see it through the mesh here, which leads me to believe that this is definitely a vintage hat. Pretty nice condition, it looks like unworn. I mean, I don't see any sweat stains anywhere on it. This could be, you know, a $35 hat all the way up to maybe a $70 hat. Hard to say, but it still has the tag on top. As long as I describe it properly, I think that's not a far-fetched estimate. I do live in Austin, Texas, so something that could maybe list locally as well, but very neat, more than likely going on eBay. I like that. I like this, pretty cool. All right, this last find, I should have no problem, all right, selling this, and I think this will yield me about two times the amount of what I spent on the entire estate sale. Maybe I should go to more estate sales. I don't go to estate sales because it's like waiting on a bunch of line and you feel as if, I feel as if I'm missing out on so many other garage sale opportunities and that's the reason why I don't do estate sales very much. But I went to this estate sale because there were not that many garage sale opportunities. It was drizzling and I was kind of close to it. Even though I suspected there would be a big line, there was. I still got my hands on this thing. It was sitting above a doorway and it was a room that not many people were in. So you gotta look around. The best part about estate sales is just look everywhere, the closets, every nook and cranny, uh, and look up. I mean, sometimes people don't look up above a doorway, and that's where this thing was sitting right here. So we have a made in Mexico, you know, looks like a maybe mini longhorn kind of thing, bull, I don't know, but uh, either way, this and the booth probably sell for 100 to maybe 110 bucks. Um, of course, if you go around the vintage antique malls here in Texas, you're gonna find longer, actual longhorn ones, you know, that are bigger. Those can be anywhere from like 150 to $300 a piece. But something like this, you can hang hats on, you can put all kinds of stuff on, it can be a coat rack, very neat, and people in Austin love this stuff. So I don't see why 100 to 110 is unreasonable for something like this. This was actually marked $25, but if you put things in a really big pile, you can get some crazy deals. And you know, this is the last find from that estate sale, and I spent $52. This alone probably yielded me two times, you know, that amount in return. So it's pretty, pretty cool. Maybe in other places around the USA, people don't care about this stuff. In Texas, in Austin, Texas, people care about horns. They care about bull stuff. They care about things that look like this. And so, yeah, and it's rare enough to be in my antique mall too, because I don't think any other booth would have anything like that as well. So it's a perfect item. It, it appeals to people that come in the antique mall. And plus, if someone looks at it and they go, oh, maybe think about it. They're not gonna find one anywhere else in the, antique, in the antique mall, so they have to come back to my booth and get it. So, perfect, perfect find. What do you guys think? Should I go to more estate sales? I thought it was a pretty good pickup. You know, all that stuff for 52 bucks. Let me know what you think down below. I hope you enjoyed this video. Take it easy. Goodbye!